Hello, everyone watching and listening, and welcome to another episode of Inspired By with Stowe. And y'all know his name, y'all know his voice, y'all know his face. Today, I got the one and only Griff. How you doing, man? What's cracking, homeboy? How are you? I'm good, man. It's the episode of the, the one name men. I'm Stowe, you Griff. <laughs> Damn. It's Beyonce, different. Cher, and Bono. <laughs> <laughs> it's monosyllabic. That's what it is. Right. One name. Right, right. Timon, Pumba. <laughs> hey. Batman. No, right. I mean, double no, <laughs> no, that's hilarious, man. I appreciate you taking your time because I understand everything that you do. And just, just based off of the radio life, like I already know what that all entails. Um, plus everything you're doing. Uh, movie, you're hosting shows, like you just man, life is man. I'm a, hey, listen. If the homie called me and say, Let's do something real quick, I'm always down. I love uh Columbus Inspiration Station, so anything <laughs> for Joy 107.1, man, go blue though. Let them right. know, let me <laughs> let them know that off gate. Like, I, I gotta love hate <laughs> with the you know, what I'm saying with the Columbus yeah. affiliate, like, I'm. I'm Michigan, dog. Like you know, I I listen. I you don't want this funk. If you don't, if you don't have nothing to do with this, Allen, don't 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 do it, Stowe. Hey, don't do it, dog. I'm a Michigan fan. No, I go hard against them. We them blank eyes. That's all I say. <laughs> right, and every, everybody loved me until they find out that I'm right there with you. I know. <laughs> right there with you. But but the hate is, you know what I'm saying. But but. You can't be in Columbus and be a Michigan fan and not be saying go blue all the day, every hour on the hour, just yeah. like somebody from Columbus ain't going to go to Ann Arbor and be right. all quiet with the fuck I love. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only because I got to live here and people see me out in public. <laughs> Honey, I anyway, that's a whole nother. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. We didn't even play y'all last year. What are we talking about? <laughs> not even that. I mean, you know. <laughs> right. not, I just wanted to uh, to ask you with with everything that you got going on with you, like how, like what are the intentions behind your grind? Man, you know, I it used to be my kids, but they're all grown now. Uh, 30, uh, 28 in July, 28 in November, 22 in June, and 14 in May. So I I, I would say, I used to say my kids, I'm 26 years uh, celebrating comedy on April 14th um, next week, next Wednesday, actually. Um, and I, I would, at this point, it's just about being consistent you know, I I I am who I am because God gave me a voice. Um, my my anointing is is timing. You know, a lot of people think is is laughter and making people, but it's actually timing. God's blessed me with timing, so the comedy just proves it because I have it on stage. But I'm always on the plane next to the guy who's looking for a TV host or you know, uh, in the back of the go-kart restaurant and it's a lady who's starting a new dot, dot, dot. Like, it's, yeah. it's I've been like that my whole life. Um, but probably what motivates me or what uh, really drives me to be who I am is just because I, I have the responsibility that God gave me when I was young and I take it to heart. Yeah. Yeah, because co comedy, um, like you mentioned, that you do is to me is one of the the riskiest professions, like ever. Oh no, y'all should be scared. Don't jump on no stage. <laughs> Just be funny in the studio. Right. You don't want that smoke. No. Seventy one minutes in front of some strangers. That ain't no joke. But Man. it's uh, it's and it's weird because I didn't perform live last year for a whole year, you know, and now uh getting back, I'm still I did 10 minutes last week and it was it was a I had an all right set. Uh and then I did 20 and I had a great set. So uh mm -hmm. just you know, learning to 
be back on stage. I've been in so many Zooms. I had a show, and I was going to go in with a nice shirt and some shorts <laughs> on. <so> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the uniform now for the Zoom shows, though. You have your nice man blouse on and to rock you some draws. <laughs> Right, right. So, like, because you you say that you wanted to do comedy since you were a, a child, but like, what was it? It you- was when I was three. My mom used to work at uh, nursing homes, convalescent homes, mm-hmm. and she would put the old people in half a circle, the seniors in half a circle, and she would say, "Go make them laugh." And I was probably on a geriatric tour for three <laughs> years, and <laughs> good ums. Uh, <laughs> and and I, and I just got really comfortable around you know people looking at me and me making them laugh and me making up stuff and my improv and you know it wasn't just straight comedy at three and four right. it was more hey Miss Robinson you drew uh, Mr Johnson don't go to sleep uh, somebody peed on themselves <laughs> like you know it was just always observation yeah no that and that's so cool because I see. You know, in your journey, like you, well, you talk about as a child being in the old people's home, but now I see you hosting events for kids and then adult shows. Like, what, what allows you to be this versatile? And you, because you talk about you want to always stay in your lane, but it's like your lane is almost the whole freeway. Well, that's that's the best part when God gives you a lane. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't interfere with other people's lane. So it's your own lane. You could drive fast. You could drive slow. You could get off. Uh, you could park on the side. You could go to sleep. Right. You know, the lane never goes away. So, um, I, you know, I'm a creative. So I'm always you know, I'm an author. I wrote a book for moms raising sons from the perspective of a son raised by a 15 year old mother called Cats and Puppies. You yeah. can go to two trillion.com, my website, and get that the number two, the word trillion.com. Um, I'm writing a lot more. I'm about to start doing animated voiceovers. Mm. And just, I mean, you know, it's crazy because me and my wife right now, and I just got married. December thirtieth. Yep. I'm a newlywed. We in our first trimester. <laughs> we the size of a plum. We so cute. Right. We like this big in love. This is her. <laughs> this is me. And we just be. Sometimes we be kissing. Sometimes <laughs> I know this ain't, but <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's, that's so dumb. I'm sorry. Why I got these two little things right here anyway? But the, the fact that this one is a raider and it's big, and then this is a little one. Like this, is how we look when I hug her. I go, look. If it's up, then it's up, then it's up. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm here all week. Enjoy the veal. <laughs> You talked about your uh your book, uh, Cats and Puppies, which yeah. is not a story about a book about animals. It's not a book about animals. Yeah. That's what it say. I was talking to uh, uh Chantel Norman Baby, and we got to talking about uh black church, and she said, "Man, somebody should." And I was telling her how you know I was writing my books and stuff, and she said, "Stel, your next book should be." about you know black church stories and then she said then you can get the audio book done by different comedians and i'm like i don't even want to write that and you know, that's and talk funny to you, talk everybody to you gonna that. be mad at you though right <laughs> that's what i'm going i'm going to give it to you <laughs> you don't have to you got to let a jehovah witness write it <laughs> jehovah witness writes a whole book about black churches but they're looking for them for the last three years so <laughs> yeah, I think the audio book. I, I, I actually, that's a really good idea. That's that. That sounds dope. Like just to get um, my church experiences were so weird though. Like my mom went to a bunch of church. Like Erica went to one church her whole life, and her her uncle was the pastor. And then you know what I'm saying like, and she known the Lord since so she was little. Man, my mom went to ninety churches. She was all religions. 
She was Muslim. She tried Scientology for a couple weekends. Uh, she did everything, dog. Uh, I remember we was we was in a homeless shelter, and it was I think it was like a nun uh, convent. Or I just remember this little glow in the dark Mary. I was like a kid, and they gave me a glow in the dark Mary, and and I had it, and I was like. I don't think Jesus, mama. <laughs> I was so confused by the glow in the dark, Mary. I was like, Jesus what? don't get a glow in the dark, but his mama do. I'm confused. I don't. I don't want to practice Catholicism. Oh man, you had a, you had a Mother Mary action figure. <laughs> man, that glow in the dark, like better than GI Joe. I was fighting it like this. I was like, hey, GI Joe. You can't fight Mary. I can fight Mary. Right. Mary Strong has the power of her son in the crisis. I'll fight whoever I will. No, no, no. Okay, all right. Oh, all right, my yeah. God. I just happened to have two bears. <laughs> I got all kind of random stuff, like, because I'm so used to doing I got this St. Jude's. See how this looks? But look how awesome this is. I'm right there. I got that. I'm right there with you on that. <laughs> look. I got, but do you got a tambourine? I got a, I got a tambourine. So I got, I got two different kind of tambourines. I got that one. I got one that go on the drums. I got that kind of tambourine. I got some mustard seeds. If nobody know what a mustard seed is, I look at about two hundred and seventy of them every day. Oh wow! I got mustard seeds. I got all kind of stuff over here. <laughs> I got some oil. I got some blessed oil. <laughs> Erica made me start using it. So I used that much in the last five years. Like I never, <laughs> Erica was like, use it. I was like, ah, uh -uh, it's blessed. You got the, you got I didn't know the, you were supposed to put it on like doorknobs and vampires. No, oh, just kidding. Man, you, you got the, I just started to go in the church starter kit. Man, <laughs> I got my Bible. I got my Dr. Tony Evans Bible right here with my name on it. What else I got to hear that all church people need? Oh, I got Moses. Shut up. I do have Moses. Go I got back? Moses and Mary fighting each other. <laughs> Give me the tablets. I don't want you to have the tablets. I'm going to take the tablets. I will throw my snake slash rod at you. Does your Moses glow in the dark? No. <laughs> I'm upset about that. I got <laughs> that glow in the dark Mary is funny. That's the first. You might have been the first person I ever told that to. Oh, my man. wife ain't never heard that one before. I got man. All Oh here. my gosh. Okay, hold on. I got oh, look, wait a minute, though. <laughs> so, look. So, if Moses tries to fight, right, I can just pull out Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Moses, give my glow in the dark mama your tablet. I don't want to get. Look, it's a real. I got that from uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, from man. Jesus yeah. de Cristo. Oh my god, all kind of stuff I could play with over here. I just realized it. what's oh. wrong with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I was anticipating, you know, laughing, talking to you because that's just what anybody does. But okay, I got, I got a couple, <laughs> <laughs> I probably got a couple more things. <laughs> okay, um. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Moses, right? Y'all forgot <laughs> I had the Moses. The Moses messed you up. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never seen that. I was like, hold on, I got the Moses. I got an actual size Kirk Franklin. <laughs> I got. So if he, I got this is Donnie McClurkin and this is Kirk Franklin. This oh, is man. that's them next to each other. <laughs> and you just had to say those two specifically right now. Here go, here go, my real Kirk Franklin. I will kill. Oh, oh. Okay. Too soon. <laughs> <Not> too soon. 
Okay. Kirk Franklin, let it be known, ladies and gentlemen. Man. It don't matter how old you are. Right. You understand me? You could, <laughs> you could die. That's all, <laughs> that's all Kirk was trying. Do you got kids, though? No. I no. ain't think so. I got five of them. They could die uh, yeah. being disrespectful. So no, I, I, I don't think, think no parents was mad at what Kirk Franklin did. Man. Because we, we listen, you could do a lot of things, but just being disrespectful ain't one of them. Right. I I think the how Kirk Franklin reacted is the reason why God hasn't blessed me with kids yet. You stupid. Because <laughs> he's like, like that's like that's what you would do. <laughs> Don't blame that on Kirk. Trust me, <laughs> they all they cute. They cute when you uh him a him is. <laughs> Him is trying to, yes, him is. Yes, him is. And then when you're doing all that, they real cute. They smell good. Then they start walking and saying no. Mm. Once they start saying no, it's all downhill on yeah. the Acme skates from there. <laughs> Come on, man. On, on what skates? On the Acme skates, the Wildy <laughs> Coyote uh, Rocket Pack skates, with the Acme. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else I got in here. Oh, look, I got, the, uh, I got my um my St. Jude pom poms too, homie. I'm listen. I got a whole situation over here, dog. Great, great. I got everything. Oh man. <laughs> okay, his head hurt. <laughs> That's good. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Interview. This. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just see how uh, you know resilient you are too, and you have to be resilient as a comedian, because like you were talking about your sets, like you had a good set and a bad right, good set. set. I had an all right set. My first set, I was so mad at myself. My wife said, "You done better," and and it was so calm, and I was like, right. because no, I was like, "That's the worst." Oh my god, what am I doing? I suck so much, and she was like, "Yeah, you done better." And I was like, what a nice way of putting it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she was so calm. Like, you done better. And she's right. Like, wait till she say that when you think you did good. <laughs> right. It's all right. <laughs> you done better. <laughs> I just got a standing ovation. You done better. Man, my wife has humbled me so much with that. Like, let me tell you something. My wife don't care. <laughs> About no comedy or nothing. She loved Arlen Dwayne Griffin. That's mm. what she loved. And I'm so excited to have somebody that's just uh, you know, she retired from Ford last year. She's from Louisville, Kentucky. She wow. retired from Ford last year. Uh, she she works at a school here in Texas, and she's a, a refit instructor, um, uh, a fitness instructor essentially. Uh, but all she want to do is work out and praise the Lord. That's it. I try to go in there with a bad attitude and she be praying on her knees, like mm -hmm. old school on her knees with her hands like this praying. <laughs> now she be naked, but that ain't the point. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I'm married though, so I can have the 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 naked wife praying in the corner like this though, like a trap. Like, and I'm such a man, I'll be like, so what's up with your prayer though? No. <laughs> what you doing after that prayer, lady? <laughs> I'm sorry for messing up your whole interview. No, you good. This is great. Because I was talking about your resilience, and this is you being on uh, Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell's not your first radio rodeo. Oh, uh, man. I was on uh, Hot 107.9, which is a Radio 1 uh, affiliate in Atlanta as well. And then I was on another uh, morning show before that. But it's funny because I was on an R&B morning show first, mm -hmm. and then I was on a hip-hop morning show and now I'm on a syndicated inspirational show. So, yeah. it, you know, I just thank Miss H and Kobe Cole for, for yeah. believing in me, uh, you know, and then knowing that Erica and I would, you know, chemistry is hard to match. 
Really? It's hard to, you know, they can teach you radio, but they can't teach how you and I will be mm -hmm. in a studio together. Like they can't teach that part. So yeah. they just kind of knew like, you know, they both from Cali, Griff crazy, Erica funny. Now I would like to say right now in front of everybody, Erica crazy too. Like it ain't, I don't want everybody thinking Griff so crazy and kiki. Erica be doing kiki crazy stuff too. I love her though. She the most Jesus y person I ever met in my life. She oh my take no days off with Jesus Christ. You understand me? I've been working with her 267 weeks. That's that's five years, May 10th. And wow. she, she's undefeated <laughs> for real on taking days off on Christ. You know, and I, I'm saying it like you know, people be this way, this way, this way, this way. And then some days they be like this. And then some days they be like, she ain't never. She wow. is all the way, Jesus. All the way. No, that's good. I mean, and that's and that's necessary, and and that's how you know it's not just a front for her. Oh no, she's not fronting for mm -hmm. Christ at all. She stand by it, live by it, is it in that order? Yeah, so that's dope. Um, so what is something with Griff as a person or a comedian that people may misunderstand about you? Well. You you see a misunderstanding. I see a helmet of salvation. No, I'm just playing. Oh. <laughs> I don't like when people start talking. I felt very Derek Jackson y just now when you said, What can Griff? Well, Griff, but Griff doesn't like when Griff and him argue because then we, as the Griffs, uh, <laughs> No, I what's the question again? I don't <laughs> Griff done messed up the question. What's tell Griff the question again? <laughs> what is something about you that people may not know or misunderstand because of who you are in the public eye or as a comedian? Right. <laughs> she just said she just said that's actually a really good question. Um, I think my passion is. Why I got the job? I'm a passionate Michigan fan. I'm a passionate Raider fan. I'm a I'm a passionate lover of Christ. You know, um, mm. I, my way of showing might not be yours. You know, I didn't grow up Kojic, so I don't know all the rules that you can't wear makeup and long dresses and yeah. you know jeans to church. Like I don't know. I wasn't brought up like that, so I love my. I have a. I was taught by my pastor, Jesse Kearney III at New Mercy's Christian Church in Lilburn, Georgia, shout out to New Mercy's, that you have to have a relationship with Christ. And your relationship is what it is when nobody is around. You know, when you can act like you have a relationship when you go to church and act the way and wear the hats and the and the suits and the dresses and that, but if you don't have a relationship with them, then that won't sustain you through the week with just that little bit on Sunday or even Bible study on Wednesday. So I have a proper, um, very disciplined relationship with Christ. Um uh I I I'm a I'm a I'm a real thinker. I think you know um a lot of people might uh believe that I'm always playing and but I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a pretty deep visionary. I'm always thinking about how to help kids in the future and how to work on things for people that's underserved and so I'm a, I'm always you know, how can we do a comedy show for a convalescent home or how, you know, with my nonprofit, the Process Success Foundation, you know, how can we, I started a long-term care award and that uh, um, we were awarding people every other month with the Lenore Jenkins Thumbbody Award. My mom worked at the convalescent homes, that's Lenore. And before we left the house in the hood, she would say, look at your thumb and look at your thumb and repeat after me, I am Thumbbody. Your thumb is the most original thing on the whole planet. It's nobody, even triplets don't have the same fingerprint. That means you are more special than a unicorn. So say it again. I am thumbbody. 
And uh, I, I, I just want to continue to work for the kingdom and help as much as I can in the way that God gave me for till I die. Yeah. You know, he gave me a voice. He gave me a passion. He gave me um, help. He gave me provision. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to, I want to help as much as I can. It's it's weird because COVID um, in some states, I live in Texas. So, you know, 39,000 people at the Ranger game, but now, 39,000 people in 11 masks in the whole field. Like, uh, I want to get back. Like, I love performing in, you know, it's funny because I could perform in Columbus and have a ball with the Buckeye fan. Like, the why I love the Michigan-Buckeye rivalry and why I talk about it often is because <laughs> it is an understood hate. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was always taught to – Love the person, hate the team. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't hate you because you're a Buckeye fan. I hate <laughs> your parents for raising you. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> jabs the the Buckeyes forever. But it's it's a love hate though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like without Michigan. Who else is the Buckeyes going to hate so much? Right. So they need us the same way we need them. Now, right. we haven't beat them in decades, and I understand that, and that sucks for us. But yeah. when we do, and we will, <laughs> live in the past, die in the past, Buckeye fans. Right, right. I'm, I'm just a passionate guy, man. And I, I wanted, I believe, and I've always believed that I could change the world out my mouth. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, word, words carry power and, you know, you just, and you definitely deliver words in a way that deliver joy, you know, and I think that's, that's definitely a blessing that you, that you don't take for granted. And you know, no, with that because, so, you know, Proverbs seventeen twenty two says laughter is good for your soul, like a medicine, yeah. but it don't say nowhere else in the Bible that something is good for your soul. Mm. but laughter, but joy is good. And he blessed me to be that conduit, a Mm. part of him. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when I was in heaven eating peanuts, that was my mama say when no kid, when they be like, where was I? You was in heaven eating peanuts. (laughs) When I was in heaven eating peanuts, and I always see myself like that, (laughs) with the the umbilical cord and everything, just. (laughs) What? That's my umbilical cord. It just, I told you I got everything. everything. <laughs> I, I got placentas laying around. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like the little, the, the part of our father that's, that's happiness and joy and love and, and genuine heartfelt goodness. I feel like he gave me a pinch or a pinch, depending on where you live. And he put it in me and he said, you be that as a human, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I take it, it's a, it's a big responsibility. Like I really, when I leave my house, I'm all the way on. You can ask my wife, we was just at a store. Whenever we at Walmart or at Target or anywhere, before we leave, I go, this lady's shoplifting. <laughs> And she know I'm going to do it. And everybody looks. And it's very embarrassing. And now she just keep walking. But she used to be like, why would you say that? Right, right. Stop. You, you, <laughs> you know, when I leave the house, I, I see people who need to laugh. I see people who are frustrated. They're not frustrated in line because it's three people in front of them. It's something else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just walk over to them and say something dumb and make them laugh and tell them have a great day and check us out in the morning if you get a chance. So I'm I'm just blessed, man, to uh I, I love Miss H for for believing in me. And I, I say Miss H, y'all. That's Kathy Hughes. That's the, yeah, yeah. the founder of Urban One. Um I you know, her best friend was Dick Gregory. So she knows comedians and she knows our intelligence and she knows our heart. So I, I've always thanked her 
for for recognizing that in me. Yeah, I just want to meet her one day. <laughs> you better be ready. Don't be dumb. Right. Don't ask dumb questions. You right. get the feelings hurt. She's still <laughs> Miss H. Right. Right. All right. And you um, you know, you carry so many brands. You got two trillion. You got uh the oh the uh. Your, uh, you talked about your nonprofit earlier. Oh, the Process Success yeah. Foundation. Yeah, and then you got Done Deal. Like, Done got- Deal Entertainment is really what I've been working on as my, that's my federal tax ID stuff. Everything falls under Done Deal Entertainment, Mustard Seed, Faith Media. Like, it's it's all under Done Deal. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's what I'm just saying. You just really just blessing in all aspects uh, with with wherever you're placed, even, even on your own. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, like you don't get enough thank yous. Um, oh man, it's, we don't do it for the thank yous dog. Yeah. We, I do it for my heart. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I made a promise to God that when, mm-hmm. when I get older and he, if he blessed me, then I would, I would, I would do what I'm doing right now. I would help. I would volunteer. I would serve. Um, I will be grateful, um, you know, uh, a lot of times. So I'm just, I'm just being obedient to what he already blessed me with. And it's not a task, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, yeah. I'm, I'm learning more every day. I'm learning, you know, last two years, he'd been teaching me how to save, you know, and it was because I was going to get married. I ain't know, but he knew, you know, he, 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 he sent me a wife that want to save. So, you know, we have fun saving. Like it ain't a chore. Like, oh my God, I gotta put. Like we be like, look how much in our savings. Like we be. You, know, <laughs> right. you, think you have to have that kind of fun when yeah. you when you do stuff that that might not be you know normally fun. Like you gotta be like, man, we got forty dollars. Watch watch when we get fifty. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just gotta keep keep being grateful, man. When God see you. Um, take care of the little things. He bless you with more. Yeah. Our, our goal, and I'll tell you, I'll tell y'all, our goal. She's right there. You can't see her. Hold on. Let me see if I can move this. She got a bonnet on. That's not a bonnet. It's a helmet of salvation. Uh, our goal was ten thousand uh, for the year, just to save ten thousand. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we already, we already way more than past half that like we feel good like we we might it look like we on pace to save like 15 17 mm. like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Or maybe 18 that's yeah. good those like following through on those those secret promises you know have the that the public is reflected in the public and because that's absolutely what i'm living right now like uh so i i can definitely relate to that what you mean? So, like, for me, uh, a few years back, I I ruptured my uh, ACL and tore my meniscus in two places. What you a running back for the Bengals or something, dog? It was a it was a, a freak accident playing pickup basketball. I came to a jump stop. Nobody touched me. I didn't get Ooh. out, and my knee just went completely exploded. It sounded like. So it's funny you say that because that's the exact terminology my doctor said. I'm like, bro, I don't want to hear the word exploded in a doctor's office about right. my body part. <laughs> like, and, um, you know, I just like that was my first time in like like eight years sitting down. Like I always on the move. Yeah. Yeah. Work. And and I believe it was a divine injury. And God just really honed in on me because I was writing my second book at the time had kind of put it off and that time. Yeah. And that's the only thing I had energy to do. Like I was trying to work on other things and like, I would just go straight to sleep. Right. Work on my book. And so I just made that, that secret promise to God. Like, Hey, if if this is the transition that I'm making, then by all means, like I'll, I'll do what I got to do. And now look at you on Joy 107.1, yeah. 10 to 3, spreading this inspiration, right. shooting this joy around, dog. That's what's up. That ain't nothing but God. 
Yeah, that's sure. what we do it for. That's why we in this genre. That's why we want to motivate and, and, and educate and entertain because God is amazing. Yeah. God is amazing. I got the stupidest magnet on my file cabinet. I found it on the ground when I was walking and it's, 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 it's big. And it's, it says, please be patient student driver. Now, I mean, what does that have to do with anything? It, it mm -hmm. nothing, but what it does is it slows me down when I see it because I'm not in charge. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm not the driver. I'm just a student driver. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be patient. Yeah. You and know what I'm saying? That's, I, and I found that and I was like, why am I? This would make you a hoarder when you find stuff outside <laughs> and you bring it back. <laughs> But I cleaned it up real good, and I was like, I look at it every day, and that's why. Wow. Yeah, and that's good imagery because in, in those student cars for the driving school, the brake is on the teacher's side, too. <laughs> so if you don't slow down, the teacher will slow you down. You better <laughs> preach right now. So. Man. Hold on. Where is my – you need some oil, dog. That's <laughs> He needs the oil. Don't be trying to sneak in. I got, I got the oil. I got Jesus. I got Moses. You, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here, Stow. You see him. <laughs> little Jesus oil on you, dog. <laughs> but yeah, man, I cause like there's there's so much about your walk that I can relate to because you've been doing comedy for over twenty. I said twenty five years, and it's wrapped, it's come full circle to you doing it fully, you know, for the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see that for myself because this isn't my first stint at Radio 1. Like, my first stint was was on the hip-hop station. Right. And God just kept me in radio even when I left and I came back and fully serving him and in what he's gifted me with in my natural gifts. Right. You don't have to be lame and sell out or change or, you know what I'm saying? Like God, when I first got, I got baptized uh, April 13, 2003. And it was taking me so long because I was like, I don't want to be lame Lord. Like these lame <laughs> Christians. I don't want to be. Right. And, and my pastor was like, God don't want you to be lame. God don't want you to be like nobody else. God wants you to come as you are, as Griff. Yeah, yeah. I and when I when I understood that, yeah, it 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 changed my walk. Yeah, you know, I ain't have to be nobody. He loved my flaws. He, I'm the apple of his eye. He calls me Young App. <laughs> that's your, that's your, that's your heaven rap name, <laughs> Young App. <laughs> I'm about to get a I'm about to get a diamond on my head, dog. I'm gonna get a about to be, be young app, dog. <laughs> what is going on? Like, that's another prop. That's another thing I got. I told you I got <laughs> random things in here, dog. Oh my god. Tupac, dog. Look. <laughs> Got Tupac right here, dog. Yo, that is hilarious. So one more thing before I, I let you go. I have all my guests do this. Uh, it's just filling in the blank. Just say, my name is Griff, and I'm inspired by, and it can be as many words as you want it to be. My name is Griff, and I'm inspired by blank. And then I'll have to say with Stowe at the end. No, no, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, like what what are you in just finish the sentence? Oh, finish the sentence. Okay. Yeah. Um my name is Griff, and I am inspired by my parents who if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Um, and although we had a rocky beginning, mm. um, um I'm where I need to be right now. I love my dad whose birthday was April 5th and my mama's birthday is April 9th. And uh, I'm, I'm inspired by them too because they were 15 years old and had a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like who would have thought 
that these two children mm -hmm. could raise somebody 50 years later that really left a mark on the planet. So I'm inspired by my parents. Wow. Well, man, I appreciate you taking the time and joining me today. And is there anything else that we I need to know or that you didn't get to say or get to show us? <laughs> Uh oh, something. Hold on, <laughs> I got all kind of stuff right here, dog. Wait a minute. I, I hold on. Do you know who? Uh, well, I won't show you that. That might be too much. Uh, <laughs> that's that's too much. But I will show you. I have a picture of my mother when she was six months pregnant with me, right here. I look at it every day, and then I have a picture of me as a kid and I look at it every day and it just reminds me that for them to not know anything mm -hmm. and to still, you know, having a kid at 15 is in 1971, there was no classes that you could, you know, no schools that you could be pregnant and still go to school and still get a GED, you know what I'm saying? So, I just love my mom's tenacity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She fought through it all for me. And I just don't want to let her down. So that's the last thing I'll show y'all. But I can show you this picture of my wife, though. Hey! <laughs> I'm going to get one with her pregnant. Uh, not pregnant. She can't get pregnant. She can't have no more kids. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to get one of her uh, praying while she's naked. I'll send that to you in your DM. Just playing. I'm doing an interview. <laughs> Yo, man, this was great. This was great. Wait, where did she mad? She like, why you got it? <laughs> you make somebody sick. <laughs> look, I look like a little kid being mischievous. Huh? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I ain't gonna take no pictures of you naked while I'm praying. <laughs> wink, wink. <Okay. laughs>